Hi everybody, this video is going to be the first of what I believe to be will be a collection of videos covering section 3 of chapter 3 and here we're going to talk about measures of relative position. We've done center, we've done spread, now we're going to take a look at where each data point lies relative to all the other data points. In this particular video, we're going to talk about percentiles. And in the subsequent video, we will talk about quartiles and interquartile range, which is the measure of dispersion that we talked that we presented or just mentioned in a previous video, but we're going to describe here. And we're going to talk about the Z-score or the standard score, which is something that we'll be using quite often throughout the remainder of this course. Okay, now you've all seen percentiles before. Every single time you've taken a standardized test, like an SAT, or when you go to grad school, or go to med school, or to law school, uh, when you take and, and end up taking the graduate record examination, or the LSAT, or the MCAT, you will get a score and, you'll f and, and, and also a relative percentile towards that score. Now what a percentile is, is essentially nothing more than taking all the data set, taking the entire data range, breaking up to bins of 100, and determining which bin your score happens to be in. Okay, specifically a percentile is a number where a percent, certain percentage of scores are at or below that particular number. So if you actually took a test and you scored a 60 on that test and somebody told you that was the 80th percentile, that means that 80% of all the scores were either at or below your score. And that would mean the 80th percentile. That means 20% were better, 80% were worse. If you scored a 93 on the test, and that turned out to be the 10th percentile, that means that 10%, only 10% of all the other students either did as well as or worse than you. And now basically means that the other 90% scored something higher than a 93. Okay, so how do we actually go ahead, go ahead and find the percentile for a certain data set? The, well, the first thing that to do that, what you need to do is you need to find the, loc the percentile's location in an ordered array. All right, so the pth percentile is going to map to a particular location in a data set. Then the value at that location is what we will use to determine the pth percentile. Sometimes it'll be the average of two locations. Typically it's at the particular location. One thing I will mention is that percentiles do not make much sense for small data sets. They make much as the larger the data set, the more sense they happen to make. Unfortunately, in the interest of time um, and processing, we will, we will be using relatively small data sets. As a matter of fact, the one data set that we're gonna use is the population of the 50 states. Typically for this to make sense, your data set has to have at least 100 members or more for this to be more meaningful. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, to find the location for say the pth percentile, remember the pth percentile is gonna be some number between one and 100, we need to compute this value L. L is not the location. L is basically going to be an indicator that we are going to use to determine what that location happens to be. And what we're going to do is we are going to take our percentile, number between 1 and 100, we are going to multiply it by the size of the data set and divide that by 100, and that will give us a value for L. Now, L will either be a decimal or will be an integer, okay? Those are the two criteria, those are, that's how we're gonna separate out, separate out L. Now, if L happens to be a decimal, then the location of the pth percentile will be the next larger integer, okay? And if L is an integer, then the value of the percentile will be the value at the, will be the average of the value at the Lth position and the Lth plus first position. So basically, we're going to use L to find the location of the percentile. Then that value at that location, if L happens to be a decimal, is going to be the percentile. Here, if it's an integer, we're going to take the value at that location, we're going to take the value at the next higher location, and we're going to average them together, and then that will be the percentile. Makes a lot of sense, 
I'm sure it doesn't. Let's see if we can actually figure this out with an example. Okay, we're going to be toggling between this and a couple other slides as we work on as we work on the next couple of examples. And these are the populations of the 50 states in 2018. Now, which actually this happens to be South Carolina, South Carolina right here. Now, as far as all the other states, I'm not too sure what they are. I guess this one right here would be New, would be uh, California, New York, and so forth. But nonetheless, these are the populations. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the value, not the values, but the value associated with the 35th percentile. Now, the first thing that we had to do is figure out what L is. Now, remember, L is equal to the size of the data set, which is fit, um, or the size of the data set, times the percentile that we're interested in divided by 100. The size of the data set is 50, 50 states. We are looking for the 35th percentile, 35, divided by 100. And that will give us the value of 17.5. So here we have L is a decimal. A decimal. So we want the location of the next larger integer. So our location, I'm just going to write that as LOC, is going to be equal to 18. And we want the data value, so the 35th percentile is going to be the data value at location 18. Let's go back to our data set. As you notice, this data set is sorted. This is location 10, this is location 20, 19, 18, this is the 35th percentile. So our answer is going to be 3,000,000. Okay, now for our next one, L is going to be equal to, here we want the 60th percentile. It's going to be equal to the size of the data set, which once again is 50, times our percentile, which is now 60, oops, 60, I don't need to put in P now, divided by 100, and that will be equal to 30. So according to this algorithm, the 60th percentile is going to be the is going to be the average of the value at location 30 the next higher location which will be location 31 and we need to compute the average of those two okay well this is location 10 20 30 so this is 30 this right here is 31 okay so well oh, wrong way no that was there we go correct way so location 30 happens to be 5,695,564. At 31, we have 5,813,586. So the 60th percentile, we can usually call that P60. Could have called this right here P35. Is going to be the average of these two. Five six nine five five six four plus five eight one three five eight six divided by two, and that will give us that P sixty is five million seven hundred and fifty four thousand five hundred and seventy five. Okay, and that is how you find the values associated with certain percentiles. The next thing is, well, given the value, what percentile is associated with this? And this is how we do this. The percentile of a value in the data set is given by this equation right here, where P is nothing more than, is P is equal to N, L over N times 100, where N is the size of the data set, and L is the number of values less than or equal to that given value. Okay, so let's actually see how this works. Oh, actually, we're not done yet. Um, we have one more rule, and that is this. If, when you're calculating this, we want to round P to the nearest integer. 
So basically, we just the only other thing that we need to talk about there is just how to round P, which hey, we just did. Okay, so let's go ahead and we can uh, and see if we can figure some of this out. All right, so we using the uh, data set that we had before. In 2018, South Carolina had a population of 882,235. And what percentile is that associated with? Well, remember, we have that P is equal to L divided by N, which is 50, times 100. Okay, and let's come back up here. And L are the values less than or equal to, or the number of data values less than or equal to that given value. Okay, well, here's our data set. Here's 882,235. So we have one, two, three, four, five values that were less than or equal to that particular value. So L is five. So this is gonna be equal to five divided by 50 times 100 Okay, and that is going to be equal to 10, which happens to be an integer. So we are done. So this right here is equal to the 10th percentile. Okay, moving on over here. Minnesota has a population of 5,611,179. In this case, P is going to be equal to L over 50 times 100. If you wanted to, we could actually reduce that to what? Two times L, right? Um, but that's not for the timing. So where does that lie? 5,600, 5,611,179. Okay, 5,611,000. There it is, it is right there. Okay, and notice that is the location is and, and the number of data values equal to or less than that is going to be 10, 20, 29. So in this case, L is 29. So we have 29 divided by 50 times 100. Okay. And that turns out to being equal to 58. So this right here would be the 58th percentile. That is all that I have for this particular video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Please stay tuned for the next video when you'll cover quartiles, quartile range, and standard score. And until then, this is Bob Boyle, signing off.